dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as Christians, we know not only by experience but also by conviction that faithless life is an aimless life. No faith, no self-confidence. Now, if we understand faith properly, there is another aspect of the same coin we need to understand adequately. That is the virtue of hope. Now, in the New Testament, the Greek word for hope is elpis, E-L-P-I-S. <coughs> So what is the nature of hope? Now, first of all, we need to clarify in English, especially in modern English, we, use, we have another term quite similar to hope, which is expectation. <coughs> expectation. Now, although in modern English language, we use these two terms interchangeably. Sometimes when we use the word expectation, we mean hope. Sometimes when, <coughs> when we use the word hope, we mean expectation. But in the New Testament, <coughs> it's very clear. The Greek word elpis means, or the, the most accurate English translation of elpis is hope, not expectation. There is a slight difference between expectation and hope. So <coughs> let us clarify these two terms adequately and theologically. When we talk about expectations, expectations are within human horizon. Expectations are within human capacity. Let us take some examples. Let's take one example. Let's say your best friend borrowed some money from you and that your best friend would promise you to return it by the end of the month. And that friend did not show up Neither did he give you a call. He did not show up at all. Even when you try to reach him, he's not answering his phone. Then you get disappointed. Why? You had an expectation, which was a legitimate expectation, which, which, which was a just expectation, but that expectation was not met. The, the friend did not keep his or her promise. Then you were disappointed, right? So that is the nature of expectation. Let's take another example. Let's say there was a mother and a father. This couple send their only child to the school. They spend a lot of money. <coughs> they send the child to a good school in the city. And this child did not study. He did not or she did not pass examinations, did not focus on the studies, and then went out with his friends, and then spent all the money, and then he did not have any future. He could not pass examination, he could not get a job, and the parents were mightily disappointed because they had a legitimate expectation, they had a just expectation, it was not fulfilled by their child. We can have thousands of such examples in our day-to-day -day life, right? So expectations are within human capacity, within human horizon. Now, this does not mean we should not have expectations in life. We should. If not, we cannot go through life. Life will become impossible. We need to have some legitimate and some realistic expectations. There is nothing wrong with that. But we have to become truly realistic about these expectations because expectations involve other people. And sometimes, you know, other people will not keep their promises, like the best friend who borrowed money from you. Or sometimes people are weak, even though they had the capacity, let's say, uh, last month, but by this month, they may have lost that capacity to return money or to do whatever. You see, humans, are, humans do not remain the same forever. We undergo changes. We become weak. We become... Uh, incapable of doing certain things, etc. So we need to become, as I said, very realistic about human expectations. Sometimes our expectation may be fulfilled, sometimes they may not be fulfilled. That's the nature of life. But the biblical virtue is not 
Thanks be to God, not expectation, but hope. What is the nature of hope and how it differs from expectation? Now, hope is very different from expectations. Hope has something to do with the divine operations or it has something to do with God. Hope comes from God. In hope, you cling unto God no matter what you cling unto him. You cling and cling and cling all the time. No matter what is going to happen to you. You know, hope has something to do with God. Whereas expectations have something to do with friends and human capacities and human promises, etc. So hope is like something like this. You know, hope is like a very strong roof of a house well built uh, durable and strong roof so that is the hope and under that roof there can be many items you know household items furniture and many other household goods etc but if the roof is strong rain or shine Regardless of the changes in weather, nothing, will, nothing is going to happen to those items under the roof. But even if you have, let's say, very expensive items, very expensive items uh, of the household, but the roof is weak, now what will happen when there are changes in weather, when it is rain or shine, shine you see, these items will be affected because it's a very weak roof it has a lot of holes therefore that roof cannot protect the household items you see what will happen then so therefore in life we may have we could have some legitimate expectation that's all right there is nothing wrong with that but we should subordinate these expectation to the virtue of hope like that strong roof so under the roof called hope you could have many other expectations. But if these expectations are not met or fulfilled by other, fulfilled by other people, nothing is going to happen to you because we ha you have a very strong roof. So the virtue Christians need to develop is not expectation but hope. As St. Paul says in the uh, letter to the Romans, chapter 5, verse 5, Hope will never disappoint you. Hope does not disappoint you because it has something to do with God. Whereas expectations can disappoint you. In fact, you know by experience, the more expectations you have, the more disappointments and frustrations you're going to have at times or most of the times. Because other people will upset our expectations. Other people will break their promises. Or other people will forget uh, what they had promises to give us, etc. You see, more expectation at times, more disappointments, more frustrations, but not with hope. So we have to become a people of faith and hope, not expectation. Although in life, as I said, you have to understand this properly. Huh? As I said, we need some legitimate some realistic, some just expectations. If not, you know, life cannot go on. We cannot function normally without, if we don't have uh, any expectations, uh, any legitimate expectation. We need, but expectations are not our ultimate, uh, our ultimate goals. They are only means. Hope is something we should cultivate. So like faith, if you think you lack hope, you should also ask for hope. When you pray, you ask God to give you the gift of hope. Then you will have fever and fever disappointments and frustrations. Yeah. Hope means actually, even before you're going to receive it, you, or you are going to own it already. You know you're going to get it, but even before you get it, you already own it. You kind of possess it. You kind of claim it. Now, also another, another big difference between the expectation and hope is this. 
Hope is something you cannot control. It's not within your horizon, not within your capacity. Now let's take an example, very simple example. Let's say there is this particular family and that family has nothing to uh, cook tonight, nothing at home, no provisions, no rations, no dry goods, nothing whatsoever, no rice, dal, uh, chili and then potatoes, nothing. And they don't have any, anybody to borrow from, no neighbor to borrow from, nothing. Right? There is no neighbor who is capable of giving them any money or any, uh, any provisions. Also, this family has no money in the bank. Right? So, you could imagine the situation now. Nothing to cook at home, no one to borrow from, no money in the bank. Now, in that situation, the conclusion we, any person would come, come to is, what is the conclusion? that this family is going to starve tonight. They are not going to have their dinner. So that's a very logical and a very rational uh, conclusion. Anybody, even a scientist would come to that conclusion. There is no way this family is going to eat something tonight. Then only hope works, you see. Because hope means openness for surprises. But you do not know how it is going to happen. You cannot explain it logically and rationally. If you could explain it logically and rationally, that's not hope. That's expectation. Like if that family says, well, we have a rich friend, uh, you know, uh, we expect that friend to give us some money tonight, etc. That's fine. That's all right. But that is not yet hope. That's expectation. They expect that rich friend to help them. That is within their control. That is within their capacity. That can be explained logically and rationally and scientifically. Hope is not like that. Although hope is not illogical, it's not irrational, it is not unscientific, but you cannot totally explain the, the way hope works because it has something to do with God. And also, you cannot immediately, your five senses cannot immediately grasp. You cannot give a guarantee. But you could remain openness for surprises. In hope, God is going to surprise you pleasantly. You will be shocked. You, you, you will be taken aback. You will be kind of, uh, you will become speechless and unbelievable. You see, that's how God works. That's how hope works. It cannot be controlled by humans or by any uh, logical uh, process. But those who have experienced this virtue of hope knows what I mean. O constant openness for surprises. Yeah. And also in hope, we look beyond our immediate concerns. In hope, we develop a vision about life beyond our death also. You see, most of the people usually they plan up to their death usually, right? Or up to their old age. For an example, let's say uh, that same uh, example I gave you, that mother and father. They send their child to the school. This child did not study at all. You see, he, spent, uh, his, he wasted his money and time with friends drinking and uh, taking drugs, etc. Now let's say these, this father and mother reaching their old age, they are so unhappy, they feel very miserable, they don't have any happiness, they feel they cannot even die peacefully because they don't see much future for their child. But still they should remain in hope because we do not know, you know, we have many examples, thousands of examples, some children took life seriously only after the death of their parents. And we, uh, we know some children, you know, they became uh, successful only after the deaths of their parents. So these mother and father should not die in unhappiness. They should die in hope. Maybe God will do something with my child, to my child in the future. Therefore, in hope, we develop a vision even beyond our death. It's a, it's, a, it's kind of an eternal uh, vision because 
God will do something even though we, we may no longer be here on earth. Because ultimately, God is the one who decides the nature of history, not us. We're going to live our life, we're going to die. After that, the shape of the world to come will be decided by God, not by us. We do our bit, we do our contribution, and then we disappear after some time. So God is in charge of history. God is in charge of this universe. So hope means to trust in that God. Even though we may not see the fruits of our labor, fruits of whatever we do, or we may not see the fruit immediately, we may not see the fruits of our labor, God will bring about something good out of what we do. That's the virtue of hope. That's why in hope there is no disappointment. There is no sadness. There is no anxiety. There is no ultimate conclusion. You don't die concluding that my child has no future at all because you could not see it before you are before you are death. That's true. You were not. You may not be able to see their success, but you cannot conclude. Therefore, they are going to be a failure. You see, only God could decide it. So we have to be very careful. Some people would say, for an example, when they consider the situation in the world, they would say, well, there is no future for this world, or there is no future for Sri Lanka. They will say, you know, better to get out, go abroad and then settle there. This country cannot be, uh, you see, changed or improved upon. No, that's wrong because only God could claim such a claim. We do not know. Therefore, to give in to despair or hopelessness is a sin, one of the sins against the Holy Spirit. According to the teachings of the uh, Catholic tradition, you cannot say there is no hope for this world. Or you cannot say there is no hope for this country. Only God could say that because God knows the future. We do not know. Therefore, our job, our task is to keep struggling, keep hoping and doing our very best. That's why, especially in countries like Sri Lanka, as you know, many people would commit suicide because they can't, much, they can't see much future. They cannot see much meaning in their lives, therefore they take their lives. Which is a mortal sin because we cannot say there is no future for me or for my life. So sometimes, you know, we face very sad situation, very tough situation, like losing of a job or losing of a house, or one's husband or wife or girlfriend or boyfriend leaving uh, oneself, etc. These are very painful situations, or facing a disease, incurable disease. These are very tough situations in life, that's true. Very painful situations, unbearable situation, uncontrollable situation, no doubt about it. But we cannot say there is no hope under these circumstances. As long as God is there, there is hope for us. As long as God is there, we have no right to commit suicide because we could cling unto God no matter what. As long as God is there, there is hope. We cannot utter the final word and we cannot say there is no hope for this country or there is no future for this country, etc. Which is, as I said even a while ago, one of the sins against the Holy Spirit, giving into despair. Because when you say there is no hope for this world, you are speaking on behalf of God. Only God could cl claim it. Only God could declare it, if he wants. That's, that's God's uh, business, not ours. Because God knows whether this world has no future or not. God knows whether this world has, a hope, has hope or not. We cannot know. Therefore, we cannot utter or we cannot declare what only God could declare. So that's kind of blasphemy. Then I am acting like God. I have taken the place of God. I am speaking on behalf of God. And God will not allow that because he knows the future that is to come. We could only cooperate with God. We could only, in faith and in hope, follow his will. 
Therefore, we have to be very careful. So we need to become a people of hope. And we need to keep the hope alive. There is another thing. When a person suffers, another thing, let's say you are visiting one of your friends who is really uh, in great pain and having an uh, incurable disease, this person is in great pain and great struggle. You wanted to help him out, but you can't. You see, there is the dignity of the sufferer, what we call the dignity of the person who suffers. And part of our pain is we cannot enter into the pain of that person. So there is that dignity, there is that glory in the sufferer. You wanted to help him out, but you can't. Then we become helpless, we become powerless. So we could be in solidarity with that person, but we may not be able to do much. So the one who suffers should suffer in dignity. Therefore, only the person who suffers could develop the virtue of hope, not others. We could be in, in solidarity with that person. We could pray for that person. We could spend time and listen to that person, etc. We could journey with that person. But that person himself or herself should develop the virtue of hope. You see, that's the nature of hope. Sometimes you cannot give it to, unto other people. You could witness to the hope, but you cannot give it the way you give some food. By witnessing to hope, you can also spark the hope in them. You could kind of influence them. You can kind of inspire them to develop hope. But the nature of hope is you cannot give it as, a, as you give a gift or as you give some food to a person. So how do we kind of uh, help other people to, or how do we facilitate the hope in other people by developing it in ourselves and by witnessing to the hope? So modern world, more than any other era in its history, needs hope, people with hope, because the world is becoming more and more hopeless. The world is becoming hopeless because there are not enough people who are witnessing to it. So that is very important. One of the greatest contributions as Christians we could do to the modern world is to witness to this grand hope, this great hope which come from God. So that even though during our lifetime we may not see much progress in the world, maybe after our death the world will become a better place. Not now, maybe 50 years from now or 60 years from now. Or oh, 100 years from now, if it is the case, we should keep the hope alive. We should not utter the final word and say there is no hope for this world. No, we must not forget the fact that this world belongs to God. He is the boss. He is the master of this world. He will decide the nature of the future of this world, not us. We could only contribute. So this universe belongs to him. He's the real owner of this universe. So it's in his hand. We cannot come to final conclusions about this world. So the nature of hope is that constant openness for surprises. Then we will do our best. We will do our level best and the rest is in the, in the hand of God. So when we have the virtue of hope, two things happen. One. We also allow God to do his, his contribution. And also, we also do our very best. So it's the best contribution from God and the best contribution from us. So then, it's a combination of human contribution and God's grace. Or human liberty or human freedom and God's grace. So the interplay between divine grace and human freedom will change the world into the kingdom of God. Therefore, our task is not to come to final conclusion or the ultimate conclusion, but to keep struggling, contributing our very best with the hope, with the virtue of hope. So as we go, grow older, we should move away from expectations and 
enter into the realm of divine hope. That is the future, not only for our personal lives, but also for this world. May God bless you all.